it's been no surprise that there's been a rocky few months for Howl at Loose. And don't get me wrong, it's been exciting to cover and in some ways make fun of, but I really want this game to succeed. I love Howl at Loose and I love the World War II genre specifically. Playing games within a more historical context is something that doesn't come around too much and for some reason when AAA titles like Battlefield and Call of Duty decide to do it, they manage to, um, what's the opposite of succeed? And since the death of Postscriptum, Hell Let Loose is the last bastion that we have for World War II shooters, and even more than that, semi-realistic shooters? But the original developers, Black Matter Games, did such a good job building up this title from such a tiny indie studio to slowly adding in content, bringing in a community of people that were really passionate about it and developing it around them, their suggestions, and of course they made a few stumbles along the way, but all in all, Black Matter Games made a fantastic title in Hell Let Loose, getting it to the point where they had a solid two, 3,000 concurrent players every evening, which for 100 player games was plenty enough to get a vast variety of maps and servers. Yet in mid-2022, Team 17 bought the franchise, a huge company who have millions of dollars behind them, and I think they even bought the franchise for about $42 million, so this was not a small time purchase. Team 17 had big plans for it, and they were going to push it into another level. And you might notice the word franchise that I used there. We'll come back to that, but they did say that this was a full IP that they were buying, not just one game. And that gives you little hints at what they're actually expecting to come from the Hell Let Loose acquisition. But since then, the player base has risen and risen. And in the midst of all this criticism of Team 17 and their handling of the recent era of Hell Let Loose, it's easy to forget that they actually put this game into the limelight. With their backing and budget and a new version of this development team, Hell Let Loose went to new heights that it never had before. It brought it into an age where it had over 18,000 concurrent players at its peak that was unheard of in the early days of this World War II title. With releases such as Kursk and Remagen, Stalingrad, all that sort of thing, the game was growing and growing and people were really looking forward to seeing where it went next. Then we got the announcement that we'd be getting a new faction, not just a small one, but the British, something so many people had been waiting for. And in April of 2023, this is when Team 17 released it. But unfortunately, it turned out to be their biggest blunder so far. The British update not only brought in the new faction with new arms, armor, uniforms, so on and so forth, but the biggest thing was probably the new map, El Alamein, taking the game onto another front in North Africa and fighting in a, well, a much more open scenario. Something that Hell Let Loose hadn't really been catered towards and because of it really suffered in the short term. The map itself had so many issues, making it too open, too catered towards things like sitting on hills with tanks or sniping. Actually getting that close quarters infantry combat was so tricky because you had to run across acres of sandy dunes in order to get into the small oasis or the rubbles or the airfield. Not only this, but the massive issues with guns, such as the Bren gun, being completely unusable in some cases. Because of this new map, they wanted to try and counter that by making sure infantry could cover it faster. So, okay, let's boost up the running speed. Now you've got infantry running faster than tanks. Now what is going on? This balancing came with so much criticism from the community, and that's where the favour started to switch from this is one of the best shooters in the space to they're screwing this up. From that point onwards, we saw a roadmap talking about the future of Hell Let Loose, and that was the point where I and I think many others realised that we were going into an era of quantity rather than quality. Talking about the new Polish and Finnish factions already so soon after the British factions. New maps and of course, with it, more DLCs and a focus on paid DLCs. All this culminated in the horrific trailer that we got a few months ago. Something we later found out was outsourced to a third party and was released under the guise of poor quality management from the Hell Let Loose team in general. A bad trailer isn't necessarily the end of the road, but it did come with the announcement of a smaller game mode, 25 versus 25, fast paced action along the lines of more Call of Duty arcade, which is not what Hell Let Loose is about at all. And this is where people started to wonder, 
a Team 17 actually cut out for this title. But I'm sure many of you watching this video know all this. You've been following along with this story, and despite the slight summary I gave you there, I think it's important to look at the impact. Because it's all well and good saying it was a disaster and it's been going slowly downhill for a long, long time, but if that's not actually affected the game and the player base, does it really matter? Well, yes, it does because it has hugely affected the player base. As I mentioned, as Team 17 started to take over, we reached a massive hype, up to 18,000 concurrent players. It was putting Hell Let Loose in one of the more mainstream games on Steam, really solidifying itself as a double A giant within the FPS space. And people were talking about it as well. It wasn't just a niche simulation title anymore, it was actually putting itself as a name up there with squad and armor. And a lot of that was down to the foundations of Black Matter, but the advances that Team 17 brought to the game. Then we can see on the graph, as soon as that British updates hit, we reached the peak of Hell Let Loose's player base, because everybody was excited for it, everybody wanted this update. Adding in a new frontier, a new faction, plenty of new arms and armour, and especially the new tanks to try out, I couldn't wait, and so many other people felt the same. But then we see the drop off, and it's no coincidence that that drop off came out in May, a few weeks after the British update released showing that people tried it, they gave it a shot, but it wasn't for them. And for me, it's not the calling out of Team 17 about their shitty trailers or the love and the updates. It's this drop in player base and their lack of positive reviews on Steam that made them actually start to talk about it. And this is the great thing about a community like Hell Let Looses, is when they don't like something, they make it known, but they vote with how much game time they put into the title anymore, how many good reviews they give, and it makes a company like Team 17 really listen. But look at that drop off. The player base was halved in one bad patch, as players started to lose faith in the new development. Despite the vast amount of new money, it really proved that it wasn't enough to just throw cash at a fan base and expect them to love it, especially a fan base that was kind of built on passion and trust with the developers in the first place. But this is where it started to change. This massive backlash made Team 17 take a step and reevaluate what they were planning. They said that they were going to start holding back on new content drops and just focus on what we've got so far, and we have started to see that. Almost instantly, the running speed was patched. There were so many issues and bugs with the British updates that were sorted. Now, we haven't had the full British update overhaul just yet. That will be coming out later this month. However, it has been talked about and Team 17 have been very, very open with it. I don't think they've really redeemed themselves just yet. That's going to be years down the line to see whether we can actually pick up the player base again. But it's a start. We got training grounds for the game, which was something that I thought was sorely missed in early versions of Hell Let Loose, because it's all well and good to complain at someone for soloing in a tank or locking out a recon squad so no one else can play with it, saying that that's not how you should play the game. But that's just because there is a learning curve to Hell Let Loose. Granted, it's not anything nearly as much as the learning curve to Postscriptum or something along those lines, but there's still a learning curve for new players. But there was no way for people that had just joined to understand the core mechanics and the concepts of Hell Let Loose. There's even stuff that I don't understand, and I've been playing it for the best part of four years now. So that was very, very needed. Also, the side comments about talking about going into the Mediterranean or Poland or Finland or even the Pacific later on, they've said that that content is still in the plans and they'd love to be fighting in Greek islands, so on and so forth, but not now. This is their main focus, fixing what they already have. One of the big things that they said is redefining what it means to be hell let loose under Team 17's ownership. Because let's not forget, these are people at the end of the day that have been developing it from the start with just new owners. They brought in more people and taken people out. There's been more or less money at certain parts, but this is still a game that they want to succeed. Even if we speak on it, just from a financial side, Team 17 don't want to destroy this title. They might have not been doing a great job of keeping the fan base on their side, but they put $40 million of investment into this thing. They don't want to run it into the ground, so it is within their best interests to fix what they've done so far. And now, it seemed to slightly turn a corner. As I mentioned, it is still years down the line to see if they can keep up this consistent thing with patching and refining the updates that they have before adding in new content, but 
the player base has started to hit somewhat of an upward trend. Don't get me wrong, we're still a long time away before we're hitting that 20,000 concurrent players that we were close to, but with Hell Let Loose on consoles now, it seems that there is definitely a markup for a bigger player base, not necessarily just on Steam, but on the internet talking about this game, which can only help it and improve it in the long term. I really think we could climb back up to the point with a bit more love and effort from Team 17's side. We've just had an update bringing in St. Mary and Gleas to nighttime, which is really, really cool, and I can't wait to try that out. But I think the main hitter is going to be when that British overhaul patch comes in to see what they do, to see how they fix it. Because it's not just going to be patching issues, it's going to be adding in bits and pieces, new weapons and content that fit more to the British update, to fit more to that British faction, and more importantly, fixing El Alamein. Because nobody's playing that map. I literally mean nobody is playing that map at the moment. And who can blame them?